Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. Become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. Well, let me turn to my guest who is here with me this morning from Presbyterian Medical Services. Jill Adair is here. She is a Children's Services Manager at PMS. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to KSJE. Yeah, thank you for having me. You bet. It's good to have you here. And of course, yeah. disclaimer for our audience, when I ever have a guest from PMS on, I always have to admit that I'm also on the board of Presbyterian Medical Services, yeah. just so everybody knows my connection to the organization. But you are in charge of Children's Services, and so as I mentioned, that is Head Start, an early Head Start, and so you've had some classes all already over the summer, right, as you always do. Right, so we do. We have quite a few uh, classes that are typically running in the summer, um, and this year, of course, it's a different time. Just you so, say 2020. Just 2020. All, it's there's 2020. There's a big asterisk after 2020. Yes. That's right. Yes, so we um, actually did uh, come back and open up about at least one classroom, essentially, um, at majority of our facilities and up to three at our one of our larger facilities. So we're running at a reduced um, classroom size um, for the summer. We started back July 7th. And um, actually, we will um, end on really this Friday for early Head Start, which is our normal end date mm -hmm. okay. already. Um, and then what we did something different this year is for our Head Start children, we uh, did a summer program for them. So just because of the fact that, you know, really from spring break, you know, until July 7th, they we didn't have them in session. Right. And so we uh, decided to open up just for our kindergartner, or they aren't kindergartners, they're getting ready to be in kindergarten. Right. So we opened up for them to um, make sure that, you know, we're, we're truly are getting them ready for kindergarten. So we, uh, we ran a couple of sessions just for them. And you, I imagine, like a lot of us, are watching what the schools do in the yes. fall and what the state allows the schools to do right. in the fall. Yes. And, and you are taking your cues, too, from what the state will allow you to do, right, right. to open up for for children. For ch absolutely, absolutely. So we have to follow um, our state licensing guidelines um, as well as our Office of Head Start regulations and guidelines. That's federal, right? That's federal, yes. And See, so, sitting on the board. See, I've gleaned a couple things, right? Yay. So, yeah, so we definitely have to follow both of those and just ensure that um, we're meeting all of those types of guidelines and, and regulations and all the screenings and the cleaning and the sanitizing and all of those. So we're, we're working on plans, you know, for next year. Right now we're looking at a start date of the 17th of August. So that is right around the corner. Um, but, you know, we definitely want to make sure, because we are throughout all of San Juan County, so we want to make sure we're working with Farmington Schools, Bloomfield Schools, Kirtland, you know, CCSD, but out mm -hmm. in Kirtland. Right. You know, and Aztec as well. Just to make sure that, you know, um, what are they doing? Because that makes a big difference as to, to what are they, how are they going to operate? Because we want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of those each of those communities. Even though we're one, they are still kind of individual communities in that fashion. Sure. So we want to work with them. Right. And we were talking before we came on the air this morning is as maybe parents get called back to work, um, that then means what do they do with the with the kids if right. they can't stay at home with the kids anymore? Right. And that's what Head Start is, has been, as well as educating the kids as well, mm -hmm. but being a place where kid, where parents know their kids are going to be cared for and right. learning something and, mm -hmm. and involved and all those different things that Head Start and Early Head Start does. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, one of the requirements for Early Head Start, um, which Early Head Start, again, is ages six weeks to three, so for that program, they, the parents do need to be working, um, they need to be, and or, coming to school. Right. And so, you know, we really want to support those families. Um, we do take in some families that are saying, I'm looking for a job, and then they do have guidelines as to how soon that can be and when they need to be able to get, to get you know, get their job kind of thing or enrolled in school. So those parents definitely would have a priority for sure. Children with disabilities have a, have a little bit higher criteria weight um, as well. And so that's another big piece of us working with the public schools because we do a lot of transition 
and uh, you know working collaborating with the public schools for those individuals with disabilities. Right, and you mentioned uh, parents have to be working or maybe going to school. Would that would going to school even virtually now that maybe some mm -hmm. classes are online? Would that count as well? That would that would absolutely as long as they are enrolled. It doesn't matter if they're doing because we have a lot of parents actually that do online because often they work full time sure. jobs and you know and go to school. And go to school. Right. Absolutely. So for sure, on the Head Start side, um, the requirement is they don't have to be working. That has changed with um, Office of Head Start, so they no longer need to be working to be to qualify for that program. However, we will be looking at those parents that are working because we we want to be able to support them the most. Right now, I know um, you don't have a lot of answers necessarily about how many classrooms are going to be open in the fall and how many kids you'll be able to accommodate and those types of things that's still being discussed and waiting on state and federal regulations right and it guidance is. and guidance it is it is so they've uh, the state has kind of talked about some ratios and and what we can look at for how many kids into a classroom doesn't mean that that's what we have to do they're just saying this is what what they're now allowing if we choose to do that um, but we um, Currently, actually, we'll be, be meeting later on this week, in fact, just to make sure where are we at for truly a start. Do we want to kind of do the hybrid? Do we want to do some children coming in to the center, some of them doing virtual? What is that going to really look like? And that's where that collaboration with the public schools is so important. So we want to ensure that that, that piece happens and then, again, taking in those guidelines because there's still so much. All, you know, we operate with all four different school districts, and they're all kind of looking at things a little bit differently. Right. So it makes it a little bit harder for us because even though we are out in Bloomfield, as an example, um, often those parents may work in Farmington. You know, and so, um, and vice versa, we could have kids that come to Farmington, but they live in Bloomfield. And so they may have other children that go to Bloomfield schools, as an example. And so we have to really try to see what's going to be the best for them, because if each district has a different day, that they're going to say, oh, Monday we're not going to have kids, or Wednesday we're not going to have kids, or Friday we're not going to have kids. You know, how is all that going to blend so that we can truly meet everyone's needs? Because that can kind of throw things off a little bit for that family. Sure. That may say if, if they're bringing their child to Farmington because they work in Farmington, but the rest of their kids are off on a Monday and we're saying we're off on Wednesday. So, yeah, it's it's right. it's crazy. <laughs> so we'll be able to get it figured out for Good. them for sure and, and definitely want to survey the parents and see what are those needs. Right. You know, what what is what are the true community needs? But I guess the, the word this morning is that if parents are, are thinking they're going to be called back to work or already have been called back to work and have used Head Start or, or need to use Head Start or early Head Start services and for their children – they should be applying oh, absolutely. now yes. and getting on, or getting on the list or at least making those phone calls, right, to, to figure out so that when you get your plans figured out, they're ready to go. Absolutely, absolutely. So it is so important to come and pick up an application now. Um, they can pick it up at any of our seven locations. Um, you know, we are in Bloomfield and Aztec. We're up off the Nappy area. Uh, we're at... Um, our Cottonwood site's a little bit more difficult to find, but that's between um, Bloomfield and Farmington. You know, Rosinante right now, they, they can't go to that facility. That facility's closed. Kirtland right now, they're closed. Um, but definitely the best place to go to get an application is at our administration office, and that's at 608 Riley Avenue. Um, it's here in Farmington. We're right off of Municipal. That's the best place to go. Pick up an application. It will tell you everything that you need and bring it back there. The sooner the better because we are making those selections. And especially knowing that, you know, some of our class sizes will need to be reduced. So it's very, very important to get those in as soon as possible. Right. And that address, uh, Riley Avenue, it's literally across the street from City Hall. It is. Right across from City Hall. It's right my best way of, to describe yeah, it. Right in front of Marion Oil. And I always you know, tell people, right where you know you used to go and pay your, your electric bill. You know, I'm always trying to right at right. the curve. And if you're, if you're coming down Municipal and you don't curve with the road, you'll run into our parking lot. That's true. <laughs> 
That's very true. I tell everybody that all the time. If you don't curve with the street, you're going to run into the parking yeah. lot. Yeah, you'll hit the curb, but then you'll be in the parking yeah, lot. Then you'll so, be in the parking yeah. lot, for but, sure. But there you go. <laughs> um, and so with all this going on, Jill Adair, you've had to, again, kind of have some different child-teacher ratios and things like mm-hmm. that even over the summer, right? We yes. were talking before we came on the air, mm-hmm. and that was, again, those COVID-safe practices that we hear the governor talking about and, and others mm-hmm. of trying to keep everybody safe and, and together, even as they do some of the things that kids want to do, like go out and play on the playground and come in for a snack or whatever the case may be, right? Right. Absolutely. So a lot of things have really changed. Um, one thing that I was really, really proud of that, that we did was our family style dining. Because today's day and age, we're so busy that we really don't have that opportunity sometimes at home, right, to teach the kids on sitting around the table to, to, to eat. Everyone's, everyone's on the fly. So um, unfortunately, due to COVID, that's one thing we've had to kind of take away. So what that means is we still have the children come and sit around six feet apart around the table. We may have two tables with children instead of one. And instead of the children, so family-style dining is really having them teach themselves to be independent. So, you know, at home you get your mashed potatoes and we want to teach the children, put it out, serve themselves, put it on the plate. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately we don't allow that right now because we don't want all the hands and everything. So that's one thing that has changed to where now the teachers have to dish out all the plates and, and those types of things. Um, we definitely have reduced our number of children in a classroom. We've reduced the number of children that are in the centers for play um, in order to work on social distancing. We definitely have our groups of teaching staff. So um, we've assigned, you know, up to almost five parents, or not parents, excuse me, five teachers into a classroom that we kind of can rotate through as we need to you know, and so then those um, that group setting always is there. So we're not blending groups. We're not blending one person from another area coming in, you know, to kind of keep that, um, again, secure and safe. We also utilized a, a, a company called Stay Clean. So that's kind of new to our area. And so he actually came through and they sanitized all of my f- facilities and classrooms that I opened. Um, and so that was really, really nice. They totally did that, all of our playground equipment, everything in that fashion. Um, also, one of the n- other new things is is that any time kids go outside to play, you have to sanitize the playground. So we've really worked hard right now for the summer to ensure that those groups of children are only utilizing one playground at a time. So, again, we're not mixing that but then we do still have to sanitize that playground after each use. Right. And that's part of the, I guess, the guidelines, it right? Is. From Absolutely. the state and federal governments it about is. keeping kids in the same group of kids, mm-hmm. whereas maybe before they could all go out and mix and mingle and play right. with other classrooms and other kids from other teachers and things right. like that. Mm-hmm. But these days, if I'm in a class with one teacher, that's the class that I go out to the playground with and come back with and in the same room. Room. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so there's no, so we, they can't go to a cafeteria So one of my centers, we had a cafeteria, so we can't have them go there to eat. Um, We used to have maybe three classrooms outside. We can't do that anymore. It's truly just the one class going out. And again, keeping with those same groups, you know, um, so it makes it, it makes it difficult, but we're definitely, you know, following the child care licensing regulations and um, as well as our state guidelines from the governor and and Office of Head Start. Right. And so um, so this is what's been going over the summer at a kind of a smaller capacity. Right. And then you'll be adding to that a little bit in the fall. So that's your plans. That's my plan. So our plan right now is as we're taking in applications, um, as we're trying to build our classrooms, we want to survey the parents cause, so that we can know, you know, what are the needs, you know, um, and what 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 will that look like so that we can kind of come up with a little bit better plan for sure in that fashion. But we will be operating, you know, a lot more classrooms than we are right now. And, of course, before all this or as all this was kind of developing, we heard a lot about early childhood education. The state was talking about a lot more money um, for programs and things Mm -hmm. like that. And so, you know, I think it's getting a lot more attention, Mm -hmm. the work that you and your teachers are are doing doing. around the state. Yes, 
Absolutely. Which is a good thing. It is a good thing. It is a good thing. Um, you know, I hear a lot now people saying, oh, my gosh, these poor teachers. <laughs> you know, I don't know how they do it. Um, and it's, you know, the, it's so in that piece, that's really good. Yes. You know, and, and from March on, you know, it's amazing to see the creativity that our teachers have had to do. I've been so proud of them um, because they really have had to think outside the box of what can we do to teach and, and learn technology because that's, you know, that, that that changes all the time. And for them and sometimes to be, it works and sometimes and so, it doesn't work like yeah, it's supposed to work. That's absolutely, true. Absolutely, absolutely. And not everybody has the fancy camera and everybody have Internet and all that. So it's really been they've had to be so creative because we have maintained staying engaged with our families. You know, and so for definitely for up to two to three times a week, there's engagement with them of some form, whether it's a phone call, whether it is that they're getting onto a Zoom and, and we're actually doing kind of a class over the Internet in that fashion. So, and it's it's been really fun and, and neat to see my staff bring in, you know, what's in their environment. You know, we have some that live out on farms, and so to bring in their animals, and, you know, it's it's been really, really nice, and, and that's something that I've been really, really proud of them. Very cool. And you mentioned that maybe some of these classes might be virtual and things like that. And for the age of your kids in these programs, some folks may be wondering how you can how you can do that how with a uh, right. little early head start, head right. start kids, right? Mm-hmm. So it is difficult. So some things that we're that we've done is sit around and do still our circle time, and definitely on reading stories, doing art activities. So if there are items that the children would typically do in a classroom, so um, art's what's coming to mind right now. Sure. We would make sure that we would have those supplies, and we do deliveries every month. I mean, every week, excuse me. And then, you know, because we also are, provide all diapers and wipes um, to our families, you know, we, we still did that. So we would actually, before we went back into session, we made sure every week we delivered diapers to the families. You know, so um, those types of things would, would begin again to those families that mm-hmm. were, um, aren't coming to our center. We would still provide the diapers to them. We didn't do the wipes because that um, the state office of Head Start was like, eh, that may not be the best idea. Right. Let's just, you know, right now just make sure you're providing the diapers to them. Um, but any type of supplies that are needed, those are things that we would deliver so that whenever they would have the class, they were able to do them together or... They did it on their own. We had the class, and then we kind of did like a show and, and tell kind of thing. Right. And now yeah. I was looking at your Facebook page earlier mm-hmm. this morning because Presbyterian Medical Services has a Children's Services Facebook, Facebook page. page. Yes. And I noticed a lot of videos of some yes. do-at-home projects mm-hmm. and art mm-hmm. things and other things that, yes. that families could be doing, right? And right. that's that. you don't even have to be enrolled necessarily. That's free that, for everybody. Yeah, that's Facebook. absolutely. And we also have a YouTube page. So okay. P- PMS has a YouTube page. Um, and so we've also seen that um, throughout all of our other children's services programs that are throughout the state, they've been uploading as well to those um, to the, our YouTube page. And so there are some wonderful activities out there. Again, it's just it amazes me the creativity. Right. Yeah. But for parents who have been at home with the kids, wondering, you know, maybe because summer camps mm-hmm. are off and things like that that they would normally do with right. the kids or can't be done. Um, some great ideas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some wonderful art activity and things that, again, you know, they're trying to pull what's just around the house. What are some items that you already have that you can pull together to do? Right. Right. Yeah. Now, talk to me a little bit about um, the idea with Head Start and Early Head Start of being able to get kids engaged and get them ready for school and kind of and introducing some of these concepts that they're going to be seeing and hearing about in, in kindergarten. I mean, again, mm-hmm. I know the data is out there right. that shows um, for many, or if not all of these kids, they really do get a better start when they hit uh, the ground running, if you will, right. when they get to kindergarten. Sure. So um, we, we utilize creative curriculum. So that's one of our main focuses is actually utilizing creative curriculum as well as our teaching strategies gold, which is an assessment tool. And we actually utilize that creative curriculum and our teaching strategies gold all the way back to those kids that come in when they're six weeks of age. So they, everybody, from six weeks to five, they utilize the same curriculum. Of course, it's adapted to their age range. So um, what we decided to do for these kids that are are four-year-olds that would be transitioning out, 
for the summer is that we have a lesson um, within our creative curriculum called Getting Ready for Kindergarten. And so that's just been the main focus, which is truly doing all the alphabets, the numbers and colors and all of those types of things um, amongst many other fun activities um, to make sure to, to keep them up to par to get ready for kindergarten. So that session ends on the 31st. So we had them kind of go an extra week. So typically, if without prior to COVID, um, they would have been done in May. So we did, you know, extend it um, for those children. But essentially, moving on, we what we do for all of our kids is again we utilize creative curriculum. We do teaching strategies gold. We also um, use all sorts of screenings, developmental screenings, health screenings. We want to, you know, again, make sure that the kids are on track. And if they need assistance, then we work really close with the public schools. And uh, if we need to make a referral to their, you know, EPO department or something like that, we're able to do that. I have a mental health and disability specialist. Um, we have a health and nutrition coordinator. Um, we have a family engagement um, coordinator. And so they work with all of our families, all of the children, the teachers, to make sure, again, where, what support do they need to make sure that we are truly getting them ready for kindergarten. And so you are planning to uh, open some of your classrooms back up in mm -hmm. August on the 17th, you on were the saying. the 17th, yes. And waiting for more kind of guidance from the school districts and the state and, yes. and the feds about what what's allowed, how many kids at one time are allowed, and all those different types of numbers and, yes. and criteria, right? We are. We are. And again, to make sure what are the public schools doing, because we, we share children, you know, again, with our kiddos with disabilities, we share with them. We also have two of our facilities that we actually get food from their, from their schools. So that's a big part. You know, we are out in Kirtland and, and in Aztec, and we actually um, have contracts with those public schools. And so they, they cook for us and we get their food. So if they're not operating or on those days, I have to really pay attention to that. Right. And so all that's yeah. going to be worked out. All that's going to be worked out hopefully in the next this week. few weeks. Yes, right? yes, because the seventeenth right around the corner. <laughs> it is coming. That's that's very true. So, so we just have a couple of minutes remaining this morning, Jill Adair. Okay. So for folks who um, want more information um, to find out more of what what you can offer or what's available, what's the best way for them to to do that? So to give the you call? best thing, yes. So they can they can call our facility five zero five three two six six four three four. Or they can come by at 608 Riley Avenue. Um, they can also go to any one of our facilities. So, again, we are up off of the Nappy. That's at our Little Feet site, is up off of the Nappy area. We um, are out in Aztec, and we're at 805 Maddox out in Aztec. We are out in Bloomfield at Charlie Y. Brown facility there. There's two portables there. So that's out in Bloomfield. Um, we... The, of course, our Farmington at 900 South Carlton site. Those are my four main sites that are open right now. Mm -hmm. So I do have three other sites um, that are not open, but the best thing to do if they want to go to any of those sites, if they're in those communities, and or come to 608 Riley Avenue, do be prepared. You must be wearing a mask. You will be asked um, to have your temperature taken, and again, you can just come in and say, I'm here just to pick up an application. They'll do a quick temp check on you, and you know, then you can leave. Come back with all of those documents, drop them off as soon as you can, because we are making selections. Okay. Very good. And the uh, and again, the numbers are going to be probably lower than they normally would be in a regular year. Yes. They, they probably will be, um, I think right now for, you know, for our early Head Start may not be as low, but it's the Head Start aspect. And, you know, we are looking at doing some virtual as well as truly in-class um, sessions. You know, we will be operating one way or another. I think the, the main thing is knowing we're not 100% sure to know what is that really going to look like as of today. Right. And again, there's usually little to no cost for these services, right? I mean, totally you always tell free. me. Yeah, right? totally free. So again, we provide the diapers, we provide the wipes, we provide formula, we provide breakfast, lunch, and a snack. We also do, again, all the screenings. Um, we do hearing screenings, vision screenings. We take children that have disabilities. We take children that have food allergies. 
and you know any or medical issues and concerns you know definitely feel free to come and fill out an application uh, we do look at income you know but there's often people think oh I'm not going to qualify you would be surprised so don't let that deter you you know away definitely please come fill out an application and get that in as soon as you can again no cost at all for our service all right repeat that phone number one more time before sure. we wrap it up today 505-326-6434 all right. Very good. Jill Adair, thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. It's always great to see you. That's thank Jill Adair from Presbyterian Medical Services, their Children's Services Manager, my guest here on KSJE. And I'll be back with more in just a moment, everybody. The time right now is coming up on 837. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.